Hey, what's up? It's Derek from Nerd or Die, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the essentials you need to know in OBS Studio. If your goal is to stream on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook, this guide's gonna help you build up the knowledge to stream with confidence. While we're covering the basics of OBS Studio in this video, we'll be diving deeper in future videos to more advanced aspects of both streaming and OBS Studio, as well as looking at other software like XSplit and Streamlabs OBS. All right, so let's dive right in. With OBS Studio installed and open, let's first take a look at the scenes panel. In here, we can add scenes, which are basically a collection of sources. So sources can be what we're actually showing to our viewers while we're live on stream, and we're basically grouping them within these scenes. So these can be things like images, videos, text, and much more. You can easily switch between scenes that have different setups. So for example, one scene can have your gameplay as a main focus and a smaller webcam feed. In another, you can have a chatting type layout with a large webcam and chat widget active. The options really are endless here. Adding additional scenes couldn't be easier. You can use the plus or right click within the panel to create a new scene and then give it a name and hit OK. Additionally, you can organize the scenes by dragging them within the panel wherever you'd like. This has no effect on your stream setup other than just being a personal preference. Inside your scenes, you can add sources of all kinds. So some you can't see and only hear, and others you can resize, crop, stretch, and squeeze. You can even edit and transform sources to align on your scene, add filter effects, and much more. So let's go ahead and run through the most used sources and the most important ones. Let's first talk about the browser source. Here, you can paste in the URL of a website and it will be displayed within this browser source. Now, you can set the dimensions that you want it to be. This type of source will be typically what we use to show your alerts, which are notifications when someone follows, donates, or supports your channel in some way. We'll be covering alerts in detail much more later on. The next source I want to talk to you about is the display source. This will look for your monitor displays and let you select which one to basically just display. So you can choose to toggle on or off the visual of your cursor on the screen. And this can be useful if you're recording something on your computer screen and don't want the cursor to get in the way. This is typically the most often used source for showing things like gameplay, but there are other options that can be better in different situations. And that leads me to the game capture source. This can capture games that you load up on your computer automatically. So here you can see that the mode will look for any full screen application. However, should your game not launch in full screen or you have issues, you can also switch the mode to capture a specific window. Though in most cases, it will automatically find the game once you have it launched. Now, I should note the big difference here between this and the display source is that this will basically only show games that you're playing. So if you have any sensitive information that might be on your computer that you don't want to accidentally leak, this is probably your best option. However, when you're streaming, you probably shouldn't have that stuff loaded up anyways. Next up, we have the image source, and this lets you place images, still or animated into your scene, allowing for rescaling, skewing of the width and height, rotating and filter effects of all sorts. So this is a very useful source if you just wanna display maybe a sponsor banner or an animated GIF, something like that. Moving on, we have the image slideshow. Now you can use this to create a slideshow of images on a Be Right Back scene, for example. It's a pretty simple source, but can be useful in some situations. So I just wanted to make sure you guys saw this in action. Next, we have the media source. Now, this lets you add audio and video sources to your scene. You can play these sources as a one-off with no repeat or loop them as long as you're still on that scene. You can even change the speed at which it plays back. You can select a local file by hitting the browse button and finding the audio or video file on your computer and then hitting OK. Moving on, we're going to cover the scene source. Now, this is how you can put a scene within another scene. And while that might sound confusing, it's actually super powerful. So we highly recommend taking the time to understand this. You can actually input another scene as a source and then resize it, add filters on it and so on. This is known as scene nesting. 
and there's a lot of potential for creative ideas with this particular feature. This source, in my opinion, is extremely powerful. It can be used to create reusable groups of sources within your scenes. So you can set up specific kind of groups and reuse them as you need, and then quickly move and adjust them if needed throughout different scenes as well. Then if you need to make changes to this kind of group setup, you can go ahead and do this in just one place and it changes everywhere that you use it. It's pretty awesome. The text source is one of the most used sources and it's pretty straightforward, but it just lets you add text anywhere on your scene. And then you can choose your options for font size, color, and much more. This is a highly useful source because you can also use it to create labels or basically dynamic text boxes that will update with information like your latest follower or donator. We're gonna to move to the video capture device. And as a new streamer, you'll likely use this for capturing your webcam or console feeds. However, you can use this for DSLR camera feeds, typically via HDMI as well. Now it has a lot of options, but the most important one is the device selection at the top. This will let you select what capture device you want OBS Studio to look at. Usually you'll need something like an Elgato CamLink for capturing DSLR camera feeds or a capture card for capturing other computer or console feeds. Now we're on the window capture source. This will let you capture the window on your computer that you tell it to. So you can tell it to capture your web browser window and it will do just that. It'll also capture that window even if you don't have it active on your computer. So it's great to use if you don't wanna reveal other private information on your computer or just a messy desktop. The final source is a group source. After making a selection of sources, you can add them together as a group. This can be really useful if you have different sources that you want to keep together in one single unit. So if you have a webcam frame, a text source, something like that, that you just want to move all as one rather than moving them individually, but keeping the same sort of orientation or layout, you can use a group source to do just that. It'll also let you size and affect everything within the group all at once, which can produce some pretty incredible results. Before we move on, I did want to just give you one quick tip that you can use while in OBS. It's worth noting that you can, for the most part, drag and drop media of all types into OBS Studio in your scene preview area, and it will basically just place it in as the proper source that it needs to be. This can be great for speeding up the scene setup process. Now that we've covered sources, let's talk a little bit about audio. So here is the audio mixer area. Assuming that you've set your default desktop audio and default mic in the settings audio area, this should initially just show your mic signal and your desktop audio signal. These meters can be adjusted in volume as well as muted, hidden, and routed to other outputs. You can use these advanced audio settings to monitor things like media sources with audio, VLC player playlist, your game capture, and much more. So if you're having trouble hearing something that you've added to your scene, but you can see the audio signal is active in the OBS audio mixer panel, go to the advanced audio properties and find it in the list. And then here under the audio monitoring, select monitor only mute output. It should let you hear the source without doubling the signal on the audio that goes out only to your viewers. With our scenes and audio in line, let's check out some transitions. When switching between scenes, you can set up how it transitions right here. It can be a fade, a hard cut, and if you hit the plus button, you can even see more such as swipe, slide, stinger, fade to color, and luma wipe. Now you can play around with these, but the basic options that OBS Studio comes with are pretty great. You can also select how long the transition will be below this in the duration field. So if you wanted your transition to take one second, you would put 1000 as this is in milliseconds. I do want to note that the stinger effect is what we use in a lot of our products on nerdorDie.com, and this allows you to have a custom design for when you change your scenes. Let's quickly cover the controls. And this is where you can start streaming, start recording, set up the studio mode, and also dive into your settings where you can set your stream to function just as you need it. Now, 
At the bottom, you can see some useful stats such as a live indicator to let you know when you've gone live, a recording indicator to let you know if you're actively recording, and then both will also have a duration so that you can see how long you've been doing either, which can sometimes be super handy. On top of that, you can also see some useful resources and stats such as how much CPU is being used, as well as what your current frame rate is at. This can tend to dip if you're pushing your system too far, so keep an eye on these as you go and add new content to your scenes in moderation. Something that we mentioned in the controls is studio mode, and this feature should not be glossed over. It can be useful for previewing what your next scene will look like before actually switching to it. A situation where you might use this is, let's say your game's loading, but it's not loaded in yet, and you don't want to show your menu before that. You can actually stay on your chat scene until it's loaded, and once you're happy with how the next scene is looking, you can transition with any of these buttons. Now, you can even add transitions in the options if you desire. I should note that this mode is optional, and while it's not essential, it does suit the needs of a lot of people's stream style. Once you have your settings in a good place, the profile selected up here will have all those settings saved into it. You can create multiple setups that will hold all the information that you're using in your settings. So should you want a different setup for offline recorded versus live streaming, you can switch them within the profiles up here. And then there's the scene collections, which are just that. They basically are a collection of all the different scenes that you've made and all of the sources within them. So the same rules apply here. This will save you a ton of time if you need to switch between different layouts or a different collection of scenes. It's always good to back up both under new names though, especially before making any significant changes to either. Finally, the last thing that we want to cover is the preview area. So right here is your preview area, and this is actually how your scene is currently looking. But you can also right click this to add sources to your active scene. And another thing you can do is send your preview to a full screen on another monitor to check out how it'll look in a full screen environment. Then you can also disable the preview if you prefer not to see it. Another advantage here is a nice performance increase over if you have it currently running. And that's about it for this video. There's a lot of information to take on board. So if you feel a bit overwhelmed, don't worry, go back through this video and try to focus on each section separately. I really think it's worth it though to master something like OBS Studio, because if you do, it'll increase your confidence as a streamer and just make you more comfortable in front of the camera or behind the mic. There's much more to come, but if you understand all of the basics to a degree, the rest is just going to fall right into place. Please make sure to leave any questions or ideas for future videos in the comments below. The best way to let us know if you enjoyed this video is to leave a like and make sure to subscribe with notifications on so that you don't miss any future tutorial videos. Thanks so much for your time, good luck streaming, and we'll see you next time.